Today we are going to be doing something a bit different. Recently, one of our team members, some might know him as Jack, took a chasecation for a week in the Great Plains. For the first couple of days, no severe storms occurred due to a ridge and moisture being pushed south. As a result, he went sightseeing, stopping at Lookout Mountain to the west of Denver, Colorado and Devil's Tower in northeast Wyoming. However, on the third day, storms looked likely in portions of eastern Wyoming. Despite this, the storms only briefly got very strong. The next day, another significant severe weather day was shaping up, with an enhanced risk for portions of Nebraska and South Dakota, mainly for the risk of damaging hail. Storms began to initiate along a dry line bulge entering Nebraska. The capping inversion that had persisted for most of the day finally broke around 4 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. These storms would go on to produce very large hail. Jack stopped to the southeast of Lisco, Nebraska to intercept the giant hail. Some stones were in excess of three inches in diameter. As the storms moved into the lower terrain of Nebraska, they encountered more stable air and quickly dissipated. Then, on the fourth day, June 28th, he caught a tornado to the south of Kimball, Nebraska. His day started in a little town called Ogallala, Nebraska. Then, he made the questionable decision of stopping at Orunza in Sydney, Nebraska for lunch before heading for the daily chase target. As the day progressed, a 500 millibar shortwave trough, indicated by the kinking in the black lines, had become apparent as a belt of increased easterly flow began to overspread the Wyoming-Colorado-Nebraska region. At the surface, winds are oriented out of the east-southeast, with temperatures in the low 70s. The short wave, along with 1,000 to 2,000 joules per kilogram of ML cape and dew points around 60 degrees Fahrenheit, would help to initiate storms in the high terrain of Wyoming and Colorado. Very elongated hodographs with 0 to 8 km shear around 60 to 70 knots and steep lapse rates of 8 to 9 C per km supported the threat for very large hail. However, little low-level curvature and SRH supported a minimal tornado threat. As such, the Storm Prediction Center issued a slight risk for the region, mainly for the threat for large, damaging hail. They also noted a minimal tornado and wind threat. Jack traveled and waited for storms in LaGrange, Wyoming. At around 3 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, a cell initiated on the Wyoming Mountains near the town of Chugwater. Initially, it remained fairly anemic. However, as a cell moved off the mountain, it began to organize. To the south of the storm, radar indicated a boundary 20 miles to the north of Cheyenne, Wyoming, slowly moving to the south. This boundary would later aid in the formation of a tornado. By 4.30 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, the cell would become a full-blown supercell as it tracked toward Meridian, Wyoming. Here, a wall cloud became visible, and broad rotation was noted. Additionally, radar data showed the aforementioned boundary being ingested into the cell increasing its storm-relative helicity. A short time later, the cell attained a flying eagle representation on radar, with a very well-defined hook echo. By this point, dust associated with the inflow of the cell would clearly be seen getting sucked in by the updraft. In addition, numerous cloud-to-ground lightning strikes were ongoing. At 4.45 p.m., the wall cloud had become better defined, and baseball-sized hail began to fall along its forward flank downdraft. As a cell approached, several gust nados would develop along the storm's outflow. Additionally, a large funnel right would be there. spotted at 5.56 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. However, the funnel never reached the ground. At approximately 6.35 p.m. Central Daylight Time, Jack spotted a small vortex in a field to the south of Kimball, Nebraska. In mere seconds, the tornado would take on a multi-vortex state, with several vortices being seen rotating beneath a bowl-shaped funnel. Over the next few minutes, the tornado would begin to grow into a large, dusty stovepipe, as it roamed the open lands of extreme southwestern Nebraska. Jack would remain in position for a couple of minutes as the tornado grew and approached him. He would then move a tad further east down the road as the tornado began kicking up more dust from the ground. Almost fully condensed. Hell 
Hell yeah! It would then cross Country Road 10 right in front of Jack as a large stovepipe tornado at 6.40 p.m. Woo! Look at that! Big tornado! Not so much! Yeah. Soon afterwards, strong winds associated with the rear flank downdraft started to plow him as the tornado progressed to the southeast. The tornado would remain on the ground for several more minutes before lifting just before crossing into Colorado. That was a nice wedge too. Almost. Oh wedge, right? Almost. Almost wedge. Super fast stone pipe. Back stone. Alright. Still some ground After roughly five minutes, the tornado had crossed Country Road 10. A satellite tornado was soon seen. However, it remained very brief. Additionally, twin tornadoes were briefly spotted as the original satellite tornado was dying. Thankfully, due to the tornado remaining over very rural areas, the tornado only caused minor damage. This included picking up a plastic tube from a farm and snapping a 40 to 50 year old power pole. The next day, more severe storms were forecast. Several storms initiated off the mountains of Wyoming, however, they began interacting with each other and quickly went outflow dominant. On the final day of his chasecation, yet another day of severe weather was forecast. However, unlike the previous days, storms looked like they would be fairly weak. Despite this, Jack did catch a couple more tornadoes in eastern Colorado. So a little tornado there. Now it's interesting, we have two mezzos here, I think. We got one over here and one there. Whoa. Where are we at? NWS Goodland just try to call me. North of Stratford. North of Stratford? Yeah. Uh, yes, this is Stephen Jones. You just tried to call me. Sorry, I was Bieber. just going to call in a report. We just had a brief tornado on this storm that is just north of Seabird. Wow. Yeah, brief tornado. We have rather rapid rotation ongoing right now, about two miles to the west. What highway are we at right now, Max? We're on the highway north of Seabird. Yeah, we're on Highway 59 looking due west. Rapid rotation, just had a brief touchdown. It looks like it's about to touch down again. Right, right yeah, there, we just had a brief. Yeah, we just had a brief little spin up again. Yeah, they're just uh, intermittent vortices, uh, vortices on the ground right now. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this Thank is... Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Probably gotta get going soon. Then, those storms congealed into a Boeing segment, producing a very picturesque shelf cloud. The storms also began kicking up dust and eventually created a small dust storm as it moved into eastern Kansas. I do believe this would qualify. Let's 
kind of cool. We just need some tumbleweeds in here. And just like that, Jack's chasecation was over. With that being said, we would like to thank Trey Greenwood, Ben McCone, Steve Jones, and Max Olson for driving and navigating Jack and everybody else on the tour through the harshest weather conditions imaginable. We will shout out their respective YouTube channels in the description of this video. With that, this has been Overcast, and as always, stay safe.